Function composition, here's another example. So, we are going to compose this function, k of x equals 3x minus 5, and m of x is the square root of x minus 1, and notice this is a linear function, which is it's a polynomial, and this is a root function. So, then we're going to find the domain, and to find the domain of a composition of functions, I've given you f composed with g of x. We know that's the same as f of g of x. This says to find the domain of the inner function, g of x, and the domain of the final result, and then put them together. So we'll do that when we solve this, find this composition. Okay, so k composed with m with an input of x. Keep in mind, this is not k composed with m multiplied by x. This means x is your input. That can be rewritten as k of m of x. And think about when you do f of x, isn't that your input? So this is k of, anything in parentheses, of means that's the input. So k of m of x, well we know m of x is the square root of x minus 1, right? It's given right here. Okay. But now we've changed the input of k. k did have an input of x, right? We have replaced this x right here with something more interesting which means we're going to have to replace this x right here with something more interesting. Okay, if this is hard for you, I encourage you to go over to the side and let's do some scratch. This has nothing to do with the problem. We are just plugging in values so we can sort of see a pattern. Okay, so what's k of 5? Well, that means 3 times 5 minus 5. We've replaced the input of x with the 5, so I replace it here as well. We're not going to simplify this, it's just so we can see a pattern. k of 58. Well, that's 3 times my new input, which is 58, minus 5. k of 167. Well, that's 3 times the input of 167, minus 5. That's what k does, right? Takes the input and multiplies by 3, then subtracts 5. Again, if you're wondering where these numbers are coming from, I'm pulling them out of the air to demonstrate something. So what's k of 1,001? Well, that's 3 times 1,001 minus 5, right? Okay. What is k of negative 18.1? Well, that's 3 times negative 18.1 minus 5, right? I know you're getting bored. That's the point. What's k of 41? Well, that's 3 times 41 minus 5. So what's k of the square root of x minus 1? Oh, that's 3 times the square root of x minus 1 minus 5. If you do enough of these, you're going to hear yourself, especially if you say them out loud and listen to your voice, you're going to hear the moment when you kind of get bored and your brain shifts from just thinking about this directly to autopilot. And that's what we want. You're going to eventually just be able to look at, oh, I see how to do this. Sort of turn your brain off and don't get in your own way. Okay, so then k of the square root of x minus 1 is just this. It's 3 times the new input minus 5. Right? Okay. And that's as simplified as we can get it. You cannot simplify that further. Please don't try. So k composed with m and the input is x is the same as 3 times the root x minus 1 minus 5. Let's find the domain. So for domain, I told you you check two places, right? You check, check the inner function. So we check here. And then you check your final simplified result. We check there. So for domain, we see that square root of x minus 1. Let me actually write that as number 1. We're looking at the square root of x minus 1. We find the domain of that. Well, that's a root function, right? There's a radical. So we make sure that our radicand, isn't that a fun word, radicand? Radicand is the expression that's under your root. Our radicand is not negative. Remember, we classify numbers three ways according to sign, positive, zero, and negative. You're allowed to take an even root of a positive number you're allowed to take an even root of zero, because zero to any power is zero. But we can't have a negative under here that leads us to those complex or imaginary numbers, right? So we make sure our radicand is not negative. That's what this says. Greater than or equal to zero is the same as not negative. 
So, what's my radicand? Again, the radicand is the stuff under the root. So x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to 1. If we put this on a number line, here's the number 1. And it says greater than or equal to, so we put a closed circle on 1, and we shade this way. Okay, now we take our simplified result. 3 times the square root of x minus 1 minus 5, and we find its domain. Well, again, the only thing exciting here is that root. So this is going to be exactly the same. The radicand has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. x is greater than or equal to 1. So our number line looks exactly the same. We get the same restrictions. If they were different, you would look at the intersection of the number lines. But they're not. If I, I can draw it again. But if I draw the number line, it's going to be the same thing. So the domain of this guy is this stuff, right? You can see what I'm doing. This stuff. And normally you write it in interval notation. So the smallest input value I'm allowed to use is the number 1. And I'm allowed to use it, so I put a bracket. And I go all the way up to infinity. Infinity gets a parenthesis because it's a concept. Okay, let's try the other one. Let me just scroll down and give myself plenty of room. So we're still going to do composition of functions. Now we're going to do m composed with k with an input of x. As a reminder, k of x was 3x minus 5, m of x was the square root of x minus 1. So we rewrite this, m composed with k with an input of x is m of k of x. Or m of, well instead of k of x, we can call that 3x minus 5. All right? Okay, so let's do some scratch. Again, the scratch is not required. If this is hard for you, I encourage you to do it, but you don't have to. So what we're doing is replacing every x here with this new x. This x has been replaced with 3x minus 5. That means this x has to be replaced with 3x minus 5. If you already see it, go ahead and write it down. If you do not, that's what we're doing the scratch for, to kind of help you see these patterns. So m of like 100. Well, that's the square root of 100 minus 1. m of 84. Well, that, that'll be the square root of 84 minus 1. If you're wondering where I'm getting these numbers, remember I'm just pulling them out of the air, just trying to make a point. m of 35. Well, that's the square root of 35 minus 1. We're not simplifying because I want you to see the pattern. I'm more interested in the pattern than the result. m of 18. Well, that's the square root of 18 minus 1. m of 71. Well, that's the square root of 71 minus 1. m of 53. Well, that's the square root of 53 minus 1. And just when you get tired, you throw in the one you're looking for, okay? So then m of 3x minus 5 will be the square root of 3x minus 5 minus 1. Okay. Does that make sense? Again, if you don't need to do the scratch, don't do it. This is just for the people who need a little extra practice. Okay, so then we plug that in right here. And notice the whole thing. I didn't write it very well. All of this is under the root, right? So this is the square root of 3x minus 5 minus 1. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Hopefully you're starting to get this. So then we clean it up, right? And we know our order of operations. We need to look under that root and clean that up first. So this is the square root of 3x minus 5. I can drop the parentheses, since that's in front, minus 1. Or the square root of 3x minus 6. This is your final simplified answer. Do not do anything else to it. That's as far as you can go. I'm actually going to move it down here. This is as simplified as you can get. Stop. Don't do anything else. Now we find the domain. To find the domain, we look in two places, right? First place we look is the inside, our first inner function, right? What we replaced x with. So the domain of piece 1, piece 1 was 3x minus 5. We see that has no domain restrictions. 
So domain there is all real numbers. How do we know it's no restrictions? Well, you don't have any fractions, you don't have any negative roots, I'm sorry, you don't have any even roots, and you don't have any logarithms. Then you check your final simplified answer. So this is piece two, well, I wrote a three there. This is piece two. So then you look at the square root of 3x minus 6. Well, that has a root in it, right? What's the index of that root? It's 2. So we know if we have an even root, we have to be very careful to make sure the radicand is not negative. Remember, greater than or equal to 0 means not negative. So my radicand is what's under the root. So 3x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. And then we solve. Move 6 to both sides, or I'm sorry, add 6 to both sides. So 3x is greater than or equal to 6, then divide both sides by 3. x is greater than or equal to 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So the first piece, we had a whole number line, all real numbers, no restrictions. We were allowed to plug in everything. The second number line we're looking at, we're looking at the number 2. We're allowed to plug in 2, but nothing less than that, only bigger, right? So this was all real numbers. This is x greater than or equal to 2. What do those two things have in common? This side, right? So the domain of, this was m composed with k of x is, I'm going to use interval notation. Let me actually do it up here. From 2 to infinity, 2 gets a bracket because we're allowed to plug in 2, right? It has an equal sign. And then we go all the way up to infinity. Infinity gets a parenthesis because it's a concept. We'll never actually get to infinity, okay?